Business Foundations for Mums with me, Kate Butcher, is the podcast to listen to if you are a mum who is ready to launch your business, not sure where to start or wanting to turn that sideline into something more serious. It will be full of practical tips, mindset advice and inspirational and honest interviews with mums who are juggling business and motherhood. Supporting mums in business to turn your dream into a reality. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Business Foundations for Mums. Today we have Emma Benyon with us and Emma is a coach at Emma Benyon Coaching and she's going to tell us all about her business and how she fits that in with family life and work and everything else that she does um, and give us a few tips and hints on for other business owners on how they can do the same. So first of all, welcome to the podcast today, Emma. Hello, thank you so much for having me, Kate. It's great to to finally catch up because we've, we've had a few false starts at uh, getting this <laughs> recorded, haven't we, for various reasons, power cuts yeah. and all sorts. So there's been all sorts of things going on, but we finally made it to record an episode. So I'm really pleased to be speaking to you. So to get us started, Emma, please, could you just tell us a little bit about your business, what you do, um, but also how that fits in around family life and all of the other commitments that you've got going on? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a motherhood coach and educator and self-care expert. So self-care and helping mums really find that time for themselves in a simple, easy way um, is my absolute passion. I'm also a full-time post-16 educator. I've been working in teaching now for nearly 11 years. I'm a mum, a step-parent, and life is very busy. <laughs> very busy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely busy. Um, and yeah, fitting it all in, let's say it is a juggle. Mm -hmm. However... I'm in a space now where I'm at much more ease with that juggle and actually, you know, some days the business is a priority, obviously during my working hours, my full-time teaching job is a priority and obviously the kids are always going to be a priority, but there's that kind of, you know, ease and flow within each of those things. However, that comes with lots of learning and hitting burnout multiple times and, you know, and the lessons mm. learned from that experience, um, mm. which is ultimately, you know, why I do what I do to support mums, because, you know, if we can have that ease and we can be able to support ourselves and care for ourselves in a way that is simple with ease, with fun, you know, while we care for others, while we run our businesses, that is, you know, such a beautiful thing to be able to have. Absolutely. That sounds just that word ease just mm. sounds uh, there's almost a bit of a relief around that word when you mm. say it to me. I feel a sort of a sense of relief <laughs> around the word ease. It sounds wonderful. Um, and actually, as a self-care coach, presumably that means that you've got your own very good self-care routines and you're very well practiced in making sure that that you have plenty of self-care, which you must need with all of those things that you're juggling. Mm, absolutely however that comes with learning and I am human and I am busy <laughs> like many of us sometimes those things don't happen however it's knowing that actually you can pick them back up the day after or later on in that day and actually it's not the end of the world because it hasn't happened mm -hmm. you know I have a couple that are you know absolutely non-negotiables that are in you know every day or every couple of days dependent on how, how my week's working and those things are journaling is a massive thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I think often when we think about journaling, you know, it comes with that kind of like, oh, I've got to write loads. I don't know how to do it. You know, I have to do it when I wake up in the morning. I have to do it before I go to bed. And that really doesn't work for me. So what's the point? And actually, you know, with all these practices, not just journaling, you know, it's about fitting it in when and where we can that work, you know, in a way that works for us because our lives are all different. How we run our businesses is different. You know, the age of our children and kind of, what they're you know doing are the after school activities are the in nursery is this happening you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm. and so it has to fit around you know us and I really started leaning into that journaling practice more um about a year and a half ago and that practice for me I was like okay I'm just gonna do it in the morning and I started to bring that in over a school holiday I was like great I can do that in the morning because actually there's no rush for us to get out of the house and I could ease into the day not a problem and then you know you're back to the school run you're back to work juggling everything around that that doesn't work anymore you know mm. fitting that actually really productive time to you know set intentions and just a couple of minutes a day you know is, is all I do so I, I kind of adapted that process of actually well the school run super busy 
okay, fine. Adding extra pressure to that is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need to add anything extra to what's already busy. Um, so what I do now is I do that process when I come to work. So in my full-time teaching job, you know, I get here quite early. And so I'll just take a couple of minutes to reset into that environment, reground myself, and then I'm ready for that day ahead. So I use that journaling process as kind of a, a regrounding into that new space. And just a couple of minutes, I use a journal with prompts. Um, you know, I've got my, my morning cup of tea and while my computer switches on, that's the time that I take to do that. And that's been a game changer because, you know, when we're rushing between those different environments, you know, whether that is, you know, the school run or then coming back to, you know, our business or job and maybe we've got an early meeting and, you know, we're already fraught because we've had all that, you know, driving between different places, etc. Actually, it can be really helpful to just reground into that space mm -hmm. and then that ease and calm that comes with that, you know, OK, I've moved into that next chapter now can be really, really useful. And the other one for me is to go to the gym and that one is and has become an absolute non-negotiable. I was never someone who used to go to the gym before last October. Like, I did not <laughs> enjoy any form of exercise. Um, and I started to go weight training with a PT. And that was, you know, I, I guess more of a confidence thing. Like, can I actually do that? Like, am I going to be able to, you know, lift more than a really low weight and, you know, not look stupid in the gym? Because, mm. you know um that's so definitely my anxiety it. around yeah. it so yeah, yeah I get that absolutely. totally <laughs> you know actually it's taken me up until this point so you know however many months or like nine months later to actually be able to go on my own and not with the PT or with some or train with somebody else and that's a confidence thing isn't it actually I know what I'm doing I can go and do it I don't have to talk to anybody else if I don't want to I can just stay in my own zone and actually everyone else is doing the same in that space but it's taken a long time for me to get there and that you know space for me to you know move my body to build that confidence is absolutely crucial to my mental health but then also how you know I approach every single day because I've had that you know release you know I feel amazing I make better choices when it comes to food and you know how I move my body for the rest of the day but it's also interesting with that, you know, the impact that my daughter notices. And she, we were talking the other day about, um, like, mummy, why do you go to the gym? I was like, because mummy wants to be strong. Like, that's why mummy goes. Mm. And she, she said to me the other week about the things that I do for self-care. And she reeled off the list of stuff that I do. And then then we had a discussion about, you know, is, is mummy a better mummy if she goes to the gym? And she was like, yes. And I was like, that ripple effect of, them seeing us taking care of ourselves but also them noticing the difference in how we show up mm -hmm. you know they notice everything don't they they are sponges they're soaking everything up observing um whether they comment on it or not but I think it's really interesting to you know look at those self-care practices from their perspective as well in terms of our children of actually they see the impact that mm. they're having on us and ultimately then we're also modeling that to them in terms of you know, us showing value to ourselves that we do deserve to, you know, do those practices, whatever they are, however small they are. But for our children then to do that as well, mm. you know, the knock on effect that that's going to have is just incredible. Mm. Absolutely. And I, I similarly, I, I know I really notice it and my children really notice it. Mm -hmm. My self care is all about getting up at five o'clock because then I mm -hmm. just get that time to myself that mm -hmm. I live in a very noisy household. <laughs> we have the noisy dog who hopefully is going to be quiet today. My son is very noisy all the time. There's always noise around me. There's always mm -hmm. something. Um, and I probably don't help myself because I always have a podcast or an audio book on the go or something on in the background as well. But actually, I need some really quiet time in my life. And for me, that really peaceful, quiet time between 5 and 7 a.m. before everyone wakes up, mm -hmm. that's two hours of time for me. And that's when I do my self-care. I used mm -hmm. to get up early and work. And now, actually, you know, like you say, I really value those self-care activities that I get done in that time. Um, even, I mean, I I, I have a 5 a.m. accountability group as well of, of people who do 5 a.m. with me. Um, and I was talking just, just last week about how actually one of my non-negotiables is emptying the dishwasher. And it doesn't seem like an act of self-care, but it really is. Because if I empty the dishwasher, then when everyone starts coming down and having breakfast, they can just put their stuff straight in there 
and it's not starting to build up and create clutter and that clutter then starts to fill my mm. head um when there's visual clutter my my brain feels cluttered so that's all really important stuff to me and you know the journaling the meditation going out for a walk in the fresh air or a run or doing something and if i if i decide i'm going to stay in bed for an, you know an extra hour hour and a half my day honestly mm. like i everyone notices it everyone can tell that i haven't had that time to refill mm. to refuel to get my day off to the right start my patience levels are non-existent <laughs> Um, if I don't have that time to myself in the morning, it's it's really noticeable. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone can can tell. So yeah, mm. I think you're right. It's that that self care is is so it's the oxygen mask analogy, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think it's really interesting what you said about environment because you know our environment and space that we're in, whether that's an, our office, whether that's the kitchen, bedroom, whatever. You know that environment is is also part of those self care practices. You know working in a way that works for you you know I also I'm not great with with clutter especially in the kitchen and you know I have to in order for me to be productive within my work you know things need to be you know tidy put away and again it's that kind of it's learning what works for you isn't it mm. and how you can use whatever practice it is or whatever you know job it is that you need to do so that then you can show up as the very best version of you during that day mm. and also knowing you know life's going to throw things at us all the time it always does you know things comes out come out of the blue and it's also okay to then take time within that before we respond to situations you know some deep breaths maybe taking ourselves out of the situation if it's safe for us to do so you know just so that however we're showing up it's authentic in, in who we are and who we want to be that's so powerful isn't it that that authenticity is part of it mm. I think that's that's really important fantastic that's amazing how do you deliver this in terms of your 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 coaching that you do how does this actually sort of manifest itself in terms of the coaching work that you do so after my mum mum's come to work with me you know they, they have something that they want to work on whether that is you know they want to be healthy or whether they need some support with you know being more organized with whatever tasks it is that you know that are, that are going on for them or they want some support to feel more confident for me absolutely anything that we work on and anything that we want to make changes within our life you know self-care is a fundamental part to that mm. if we're not caring for ourselves it's very difficult for us to then have that clarity for us to be able to make better choices for us to be able to make changes and so with whatever I'm doing with clients, you know, that self-care practice or practices, depending on where they're at and kind of how much they feel they can bring in is absolutely key. So often, regardless of what, you know, the the barrier is that we're working on with the client, actually the self-care bit will be a fundamental bit that runs through all of that. Some of that we'll do in the coaching sessions. So we might do some breathing, we might do some journaling. But also outside of that, some of the tasks that, you know, the clients will set will be a self-care practice or practices, you know. And because also within that, you know, finding out what works for us, you know, that can get so lost after we become a parent. You know, we are so busy. Our focus primarily becomes our children. And so that, you know, loss of identity, loss of who we are, you know, what what we enjoy now that we're in that space and what works for us in that space, mm. you know, it ca can be very, very different. And so also it's about exploring that and, you know, coming at that from a really experimental mindset rather than, you know, if this doesn't work on this specific day, well, that's it. I can't ever do a self-care practice again. Mm. Actually it's right. Okay. Well, that didn't work for me today. Well, why, why did that not work? Let's explore why. Is it something that actually is just not going to work because you just don't, it's just not what you need right now. Mm -hmm. Here's obviously what we need varies from day to day, month to month, year to year. You know, maybe if we've got a busier period in, in our business, you know, or we're, you know, working towards a launch, like what do we need in that period of time that's going to help sustain us? Mm -hmm. Do we need more practices or do we need to reduce them? So it's looking at actually what works specifically for that person at that time. And that can change. And it's so exciting that actually we get that choice to change it, to adapt it, to be more flexible with it. 
so it gets to be a lot more fun and we get to problem solve that you know we mm. do so much of that in our business don't we we do so much of that for our children if things aren't working we need to turn that on ourselves you know back to ourselves and be able to be like right okay well if that doesn't work what can I do to make it work next time gosh yeah fantastic that sounds amazing and in terms of your coaching that you deliver how on earth do you fit that in with a full-time <laughs> job and juggle that with family life as well that's hard that is tough it is tough and the business doesn't get as much time as I would like it to have at this moment in time you know talking about those kind of um you know what's the focus at that time mm. the business right now it has a focus absolutely but I know that I can't give it as much time as I would like and that's okay because that's where I'm at right now and right now my full-time job and the kids take absolute priority over everything else and there's so much ease for me within that you know I used to be working all of the time all of the time you know I'd come home from my full-time job which you know teaching is is a stressful can be quite a stressful environment there's obviously mm -hmm. periods of immense stress where it is super busy and I come home and I've been working on my business like to late and that's not you know it's not, not a good great for space to be in. absolutely not and you know then you're working and working and working you're kind of never switching off and I was just you know in that space of you know burnout you know burnout cycles so much and actually now I'm in a space where I haven't a lot of time during the week where I work on my business in an evening where there's no kids and I can just focus for you know a good solid couple of hours which I love because I know that I've got that time every week you know that's my time mm -hmm. I've also started to build the business in a way that makes it sim makes it simpler not just for me but for my clients as well that you know the business now works for me rather than the other way around mm -hmm. and you know, so many of my clients are, you know, in the same situation of me, they're juggling so many different things, they're wearing so many hats. And so I've brought coaching into that space in a way that is flexible and accessible. So I have a number of clients who I will coach solely via voice notes and messages. During the day, we've got an hour during the week where I am available for that full hour for more kind of consistent response. Other than that, you know, we message every couple of days and that works really well because it fits around my life. Also, I know that it fits around my client's life. Mm -hmm. in, you know, and really importantly, it makes coaching more accessible for them because mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have 60 minutes, 90 minutes to sit on a call. They've got little pockets of time that they, you know, they know they need support. They've got some things that they, you know, need to get clarity on. And so we can do it in that way. And that works really beautifully. As well as that, what I've started to create to make this fit, you know, in how my life is right now, um, some on-demand self-paced courses that are the signature workshops that I was running when I was working all of the time that I absolutely love to deliver. Mm. However, right now that I just don't have that space to deliver them. So I spent a good period of time recording those so that they are available, you know, for, for people to download. And they can pause them as many times as they like. They can come back to them as many times as they like. And that makes things simple and accessible and flexible. And I'm, that's what I'm really about, you know, with, with absolutely everything. There is a magic wand and I wish I had been as watch. I could have more time, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's not, you know, that's not reality, is it? And so I work with what I've got and that's enough right now and there's, there's there's a permission thing in that that I've worked really hard on to actually allow myself permission that that is okay mm. to not be working all the time to just spend that dedicated time and to focus on certain priorities at certain times you know and work within those rather than being you know and trying to do everything all of the time yeah absolutely that's amazing and in terms of actually what led you to this specific coaching around self-care, what, what was it that actually, well, what was it that made you decide to start a business in the first place and, and led <laughs> you to this specific route? So I started my business. It was under a different name. It was called Isabella Renos. And I started that when my daughter was four weeks old. 
and that was born out of that you know need for some space for me mm-hmm. and the business essentially became my self-care practice because I was able to be creative I was able to have a focus I had a drive and you know I felt so lost in that motherhood space that the business although intrinsically linked because I was creating products for mums about self-care you know lots of positivity um really sharing really honest you know raw stories it was so intrinsically linked however it still felt like a separate space for me to be me essentially yeah and obviously we're now six and a half years down down the line and the business has grown and changed as I have as my daughter's grown you know we're in a different chapter of motherhood now in a different you know chapter of life as well you know life looks very different to how it did six and a half years ago and the you know the self-care part of that you know that was there right from the start because you know, I was really struggling after I'd had my daughter and when I was pregnant as well with, you know, lo- losing that sense of self and also with this, like, who am I now? Like, I-, I literally do not know who I am. I don't think, honestly, I knew who I was before <laughs> I got pregnant. And so there's been a huge amount of, you know, self-discovery within that. And alongside that, I was also struggling with postnatal depression and, those self-care practices although doesn't you know they do not fix everything they are there as a supportive measure Mm. they help me to navigate those spaces with much more ease Mm. and then about four years ago I had a conversation with I was working with a business coach at the time and she's like you know you you could do this like you've been teaching for a really long time you know you've got the skills you know you could actually be you know coaching And I think I delivered a couple of workshops, um, you know, about, you know, running a business, those sorts of things. I was like, but I'm I'm doing that just in a different, you know, capacity within teaching. Mm. And so I made the decision to go and do um, some coaching qualifications and just felt so aligned to being in that space. Yeah. And have continued to do coaching qualifications and learn about, you know, different modalities and currently doing my level seven coaching certificate as well and you know that love of learning love of discovering and then also being able to share those tools and techniques with clients is just beautiful and that self-care element is something that runs all the way through that that's brilliant that's such a good uh, it's a lovely story about how it's evolved and actually you were able to then take on the skills that you've got from teaching and bring that into your business to make it what it is now which is a a wonderful journey absolutely thank you and what would you say the best bit of advice is that you have been given since you started in business Emma oh I think the best bit of bit of advice is to just stay in your own lane you know it's so easy isn't it to look at what other people are doing to feel that that's a space that you need to be in Mm -hmm. however you never know what's happening behind those doors do you you know we see what's happening on Instagram we might talk to people at networking events or you know at different events and actually you never know what's happening behind those closed doors Mm. what support people have what investment they have you know how much time they have and everybody's on their own journey you know it's so easy to just to compare isn't it and so I think remembering to stay in your own lane with that you're on your own journey Mm -hmm. and those journeys can take time and different you know at different speeds for different people and I think within that, you know, also having that network of people who who can be like, wait a minute, remember you need to stay in your own lane or remember you said you were going to do this or mm-hmm. even just to offload to, you know, I'm really fortunate that I have a group of coaches who actually I trained with and there's a space for, you know, a rant about things are and there's also space within that too, you know, a reframe. And let's move in a different direction if needed, mm. which is really, really useful to have. That accountability side of it is is really helpful, isn't it? I think yeah. for a lot of, for a lot of people, not for everyone. Some people push back against accountability. Yeah. <laughs> um, but actually, yes, the, for for so many, accountability is such a key piece, and and having that that community and that support network is essential. I think I'm a huge Absolutely. fan of it. 
Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Wonderful. Do you have a favorite business tool that you use within your business? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think my favorite business tool would probably be my Practical Magic Activation Deck. So it's not a digital tool. Um, there are loads of them which are fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, however, the Practical Magic Activation Deck I find really useful for helping me get out of a stuck, you know, or if I'm planning a course or I just mm -hmm. need a bit of clarity. So the card deck is was actually one of the first coaching qualifications. So I did my Practical Magic Coaching Facilitator training. I think it was 2021, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, and that card deck is very you know similar to other card decks that people you know people might might have heard of um it has four pillars which are absolutely beautiful to kind of work with so you've got calm um create vitality and empower and all the cards have a visual so a beautiful digital illustration and then also a word and they can just be really you know such a powerful way of Right, okay, this is the intention or this is the question. Okay, let's pull a card and let's just sit with that and see what comes up because it's so, you know, it's so easy to sit in our logical head, isn't it? And be like, and just be stuck within that. And actually, you know, we have our heart brain and our gut brain as well, but, you know, that comes from other training that I've done. And if we can dig deep into our intuition, you know, we have all the answers that we need. We absolutely do. It can just take us a bit of time and maybe sometimes mm. we need a bit of help to get there. And so I find the cards really, really useful for that. And it's also something I use with my clients a lot as well. That sounds amazing. I love the sound of that. I'm definitely going to have to check <laughs> that out because you're quite right. I think the the intuition is the piece that is missing so often, mm. isn't it, for, for so many things that we do in mm. business. So, yeah, I think that's that sounds like a really wonderful way to to bring what you really need to life which sounds amazing Absolutely. I love the Absolutely. sound of that and and I'm really because I what I have been doing recently Emma I have to confess is asking people not to say Canva as their tool of choice because it was becoming <laughs> a bit repetitive on the uh, on the podcast and I don't think I'd asked you to not say Canva so um so actually I, I was sort of thinking <laughs> when I asked the question I thought please don't say Canva please don't say <laughs> brilliant Emma said something that isn't Canva much as I, I mean I, I'm not faulting Canva in any way shape or form I love Canva and so do we all which is why it gets recommended so often um but yeah I was really uh I'm really pleased that you you didn't even think of Canva straight away it went straight to something else which is uh it's, it's brilliant. not actually it's not a tool that I use because because I have a design background I use the Adobe Creative um, software, so Brilliant. Canva is is something I very rarely <laughs> go anywhere near. Yeah, um, I think it's nice to have that kind of physical toolkit, mm -hmm. you know, of things as well that can be really useful because otherwise Definitely. we just spend all day sat at a computer, don't we? Yeah, and you know, with with something like you know a card deck, you know, we can go outside, we can get our children involved in it, we can use it with our clients. I think we don't have to be sat at our desk to do it, yeah. you know, as well. So it gives us that different environment to, you know, work in as well. Yeah, I think that sounds fabulous. I really love the sound of that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and do you have a favourite book recommendation for other mums in business? So I'm going to be honest. I am terrible at reading. I buy a whole load of books and then I never read them. So, yeah, I'm actually really terrible at buying books and not reading them so unfortunately there is not a favorite book because there's probably lots I just haven't read them yet that's fair enough instead of a book do you maybe have a podcast or something mm -hmm. like that that you maybe would recommend instead or a YouTube channel or so podcasts I love Anna Martha's podcast therapy edit um not necessarily for mums in business however you know I think there's so many things that overlay the two aren't there you know you you can take that motherhood word out often and replace it with business because mm -hmm. you know in a business you are juggling all of the things as well you are generally you know often that one person who is doing all of the things um I also love Zoe Blasky's Mother Kind podcast as well I find that really useful and I've also spent a lot of time listening to the coach the coaching crowd get the words right coaching crowd podcast as well recently mm. um which I'm really you know if you are wanting to be a coach or you are 
you know you are a coach that's a really wonderful space to kind of also you know have that I guess you know professional development but in a Mm -hmm. podcast yeah that's another one that I absolutely love that sounds brilliant lovely thank you I do love a podcast as well I've got Mm -hmm quite a long list of podcasts that I <laughs> rotate and listen to in chronological order and I have to go back to the beginning of every single one so several of them I'm, I'm a few years behind mm-hmm. and because there's so many I'm just slowly falling more and more behind rather than catching up with most <laughs> of them but um, yeah I'm sure there's lots of valuable wisdom in there that mm-hmm. I'm getting even if some of it is out of date but mm-hmm. <laughs> fantastic thank you so much so before we finish today Emma would you be able to give us a quick summary of where people can find you online social media and so on and and if there's anything in particular that you've got any freebies or anything that you give away to that people could maybe sign up for yeah absolutely so you can find me over on my website which is emmabenyoncoaching.co.uk and there's a couple of freebies on there um one is a self-care planner which is perfect for busy mums to plan their self-care and there's also a breathing um track on there as well which is beautiful and you can also on there sign up to my newsletter and if you sign up to the newsletter you will get my self-care hacks for busy mums guide as well wonderful there's some some lovely freebies um in terms of social media i'm over on facebook and instagram at emma and i'm also over on the self-care and motherhood edit podcast as well fantastic that's wonderful thank you so much for your time today I've really enjoyed talking to you because actually you bring a real sense of calm when you talk as well which is <laughs> in both in what you talk about but also in how you express that and that's been really enjoyable for me to to, to engage in that conversation and feel that from you so thank you very much for that and hopefully all of our listeners will feel that as well um while they're listening um and thank you very much hopefully everyone will come over and check you out and uh we look forward to seeing what more you have in the future from your coaching business thank you so much kate thank you thank you for joining us here at business foundations for mums you can find all of our episodes, show notes and blog posts at businessfoundationsformums.co.uk and you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook 